Hey, it's Corbin Harrison coming to you from the Harrison office here at the Harrison household. Welcome. We're talking about writing today. Specifically, we are going to talk about simple journalism techniques to be used in your writer's notebook or your journal. Why? I don't know about you, but every once in a while I'm in my writer's notebook and I like to surprise myself or I like to surprise the person who may stumble across what I am writing. Uh, one way I surprise folks is sometimes I write it as a fake newspaper story. I did used to, I did t- teach journalism for many years and uh, I used those skills I learned as a journalism teacher to create fake news stories. It's just a different way to put some formatting down. And this video is about how I share those journalistic techniques with my students. And so uh, let me make my head a little smaller than it was. Uh, no one needs my head that large. Here are the three books that are on my uh, classroom library mentor text shelf. I use these to uh, show that news reporting can be an interesting technique for anyone who's trying to be creative or interesting. Um, the fairy tale news actually comes with a fold-out newspaper, and the true story of the three little pigs tries to unravel the truth um, by telling it through a reporter's eyes who's uh, gathering witnesses and statements of the truth story. Um, the middle book there's out of print, but it's one of my favorites, Taboo Boo by Margie Palantini, and uh, it starts and is narrated um, by a character who's the older sister of the character you see stuck in the bathtub there, but she is telling the story of this young boy's uh, toils uh, as though she's a news reporter for a television station on her front lawn. And so all three of these show my students what newspaper or journalism voice sounds like. Let's talk about the strategies I teach them. I have four stylistic strategies or tricks I teach my students that uh, journalists use and it makes your writing sound like it's newspaper writing whether you intended to or not and they are as listed first of all um, we have who what when where why first sentences we have quoting witnesses using a dialogue we have including generalized experts opinions and we have the strategy of going from most important details to the least important details this video will look at all four of those but we're going to start with who what when where why first sentences um the very first sentence of every newspaper story that you'll ever read tries to answer the five most important facts and here's the uh frame you should use who did what when where and why now the who did what is usually first and the when where and why can move around but imagine this let's pretend we are reporting on the story of hansel and gretel and uh, they have just been saved and picked up in the uh from the woods um uh, after having done away with the witch and so this might be my who did what when where why story that a reporter would gather Two children found Sunday night on the edge of the woods, missing since Tuesday, claimed they had escaped their witch-like abductor by pushing her into her own oven, period. Long sentence, but look what it does. It says, who, children, did what, claimed they escaped by doing this, when, where, and why, all answered in that sentence. That is an appropriate first sentence of a newspaper article. And so practice. You practice doing that. Here I did it with a fairy tale. That's a great way to practice in your classroom. Um, Another great way to practice, I have to let you see this picture for real. Um, A friend sent this. um, It's a family vacation photo. We used to stand by the uh, welcome to California sign when we would travel, but we never got off on a busy freeway and posed. Um, That's just not very smart or safe. And so um, taking this picture, I decided to fictionalize it into a fake but funny news story. And so uh, my first sentence here, I have decided, would be Bill and Barb Turnerson, fake names, after forgetting where they had parked at the Chicago airport, walked the 74-mile distance back to their home on the same freeway they had driven in on, comma, Friday afternoon. Who did what, when, where, why? Again, if you look at both those sentences, they both become kind of long sentences. And that's the trick of writing the first sentences. It is generally a pretty long sentence um, and you have to make sure it is indeed one sentence not a run-on not a comma splice and that's a great way to practice your ability to write longer sentences is to make your first sentence sound like a a newspaper story's first sentence and so that's the first trick which is the who what where when why sentences now we're going to talk about adding quote the quotes of witnesses and therefore putting some dialogue or voice real newspaper articles they do 
uh, interview witnesses, they interview experts, and those people get quoted. It's very easy to add that. So let's go to our Hansel and Gretel story. So here we are. They've escaped, um, claiming that they've done this thing. And so here's my first quote in my story. We barely escaped with our lives, my little brother and I, said an exhausted Gretel Huntsman's daughter, that which was just moments from keep cooking and eating us alive. So I've gone from the first sentence, who, what, where, when, why, and now I've added a quote. And so a story is stacking up that sounds like a journalist's story rather than a fairy tale teller's story. Let's do it with the story about Bill and Barb. So here they are. Um, they um, the, the, the facts have been reported of what they've done. First quote is, my horse Andrew used to find its way home, so I convinced Barb that my car must have done the same, Mr. Turnerson said while receiving medical treatment for the blisters on his raw feet. My wife must think I'm an idiot, he added. And so I've gone from who, what, where, when, why in the first paragraph. Now the second quote um, is uh, the quote adds to the story and builds the journalistic style. Interview your witnesses, even if it's not a true story. Third thing you can do uh, is you can include generalized experts' opinions. They can be real experts or just like the fake people that you might witness the story. They can be fake experts to keep the story moving. It's you can take creative touches when you're building sensational or not so true news stories in your writer's notebook. It's kind of what makes it fun. So here's our Hansel and Gretel story. Let's get a generalized expert. Remember where we left. That which was just moments from cooking us and eating us alive, said Gretel. And with October approaching, the number of witch to children abductions have once again increased exponentially, according to statistical experts. I have now gone from a who, what, where, when, why, a quote sentence, and a sentence from a generalized expert. And uh, I am now stacked up to sound like quite the news story if you were to pause and read this whole thing. Let's do it with Bill and Barb. So we last left with Barb's, uh, uh, with the quote, my wife must think I'm an idiot, says Bill, and added, Sources close to Mrs. Turnerson confirm, indeed, that she finds her husband's capacity for intelligence sometimes to be wanting. And so now I've gone from who, what, where, when, why, a quote, to generalized sources stacking up to be a nice newspaper article. Let's go to the last trick, and that's kind of how to bring your story to a conclusion. Um, the way that a newspaper article is generally organized is that very first sentence are the most important details, and then stacked below that are all of the side details, the ones you could do without. The most important details you should be able to read first and then stop reading and you would still know the story. Underneath, you should have the second most important detail, the third most important detail, the fourth most important detail. As you're figuring out how to end a new story, you have to say, well, I can't have a really important thing happen here. How would I end this story on a less important note? And I'll show you how I did it here. And so here we have Hansel and Gretel's story um, uh, developing. Um, with October approaching, the number of witch to children abductions have once again increased exponentially, according to statistical experts. Police continue to scour the woods for anyone who is a witch or wearing a witch's disguise, but at this point, no suspects or houses or ovens have been found. That's where we conclude. That's not very important information because nothing really has been found, but at least we know something's still being done about it. And so I have now created a four part uh, journalist style. Uh, newspaper article that's not really a true one, but that's kind of the fun. It's the sort of thing you can write in 10 minutes during sacred writing time. Let's conclude Bill and Barb's story here. Sources say that she is indeed angry because he's not very smart. Police decided not to press charges against the couple who appreciated the medical care, but still insisted on completing their trek homeward on foot. The car has still not come home on its own is how that story ends and there again taking a family photo you can take any photo off the internet and do the same thing with the idea is inspiration comes to you and you produce a piece of writing that takes the form of a newspaper article there are four tricks right there for you um, try them out start with the first one try in the second one uh, add that third one add that fourth one you'll be eventually writing in 10 minutes things that sound like real newspaper stories, even though they maybe aren't as real. Here's some examples from my writer's notebook. So um, I decided to write this story called Flying Frogs, Frightened Farmers. I sometimes do that with my uh, titles. I get alliterative with them. But if you were to really look at that closely, you'd see I just followed my own four steps and I have a newspaper article. Uh, I'm not crazy to come up with the idea that frogs fly. I got this idea from the picture book Tuesday. I thought, what if a reporter was reporting on that? And I took a picture out of the picture book uh, on the copy machine and I put it in here and that uh, I created a newspaper story around it. Here I did it with uh, actually family photos. Um, the one on the left is uh, my wife in middle school on 
I think it was dress up like you're a surgeon day. And then on the right, you'll see my nephew who's in high school now who um, had a big bouquet of balloons on his birthday. I decided to write two fake news stories, one about young middle school surgeons saving someone's life and then one about a baby um, floating away with his birthday balloons. And so again, here I am practicing it, but I have practicing my own four techniques. Uh, the idea here is, uh, is one that's found on our website, the Always Right website, uh, which is CorbettHarrison.com. Please visit us anytime if you're looking for some fresh ideas for uh, making writing a little more interesting to your students. Um, if you don't want to search for the uh, lesson that this one, uh, this video is pertaining to, um, at Always Write, if you Google Always Write Sensational Notebook News, um, you should come to this uh, the lesson directly as our very first step. Enjoy, and uh, thanks for watching. Remember, if it's on the news, uh, it could be in your writer's notebook. And if it's not in the news, you can make it fake news in your writer's notebook. Have a great day, everyone. Talk to you later.